In today's news, this just in from BRICS News, Russia says the creation of a financial system similar to SWIFT will help create a new economic reality for BRICS countries similar to SWIFT, not using SWIFT. This is further confirmation of the inevitable demise of the old financial system and the dollar as a world reserve currency. The BRICS are building the new digital rails and do not need SWIFT, they don't even want SWIFT. They will bypass SWIFT with a new financial system that will use digital assets. The BRICS Alliance is developing its own financial messaging system to replace the Western SWIFT network, aiming to reshape global trade. Again, pay close attention to the terminology used to replace SWIFT. This new system will enable BRICS countries to settle cross-border transactions without relying on the US dollar, potentially altering the balance of economic powers in international markets. This is the official announcement from the BRICS that their goal of decoupling from the West is closer than ever and multiple countries are now starting to follow in suit, expressing their desire to become a part of the growing BRICS Plus alliance. No SWIFT, no dollar. They will use blockchain and they will use digital assets. In fact, in that regard, the Russian parliament has passed a law in the first reading to legalize international payments in Bitcoin. 404 votes in favor and zero votes against an absolute landslide, a complete acceptance of this new asset class, something that America desperately needs to do as well, in my opinion. And the final vote will take place on July 30th, just three days from now, for implementation by September 1st, a little over a month away from now. Very big news, absolutely massive news, and again, cold hard proof to you that crypto is here to take over and to become the backbone of this new monetary system, therefore exploding in price from where it's at right now, to replace the SWIFT system, but make no mistake, it won't be Bitcoin. It won't. Bitcoin is sort of a Trojan horse, if you will, that they are using Bitcoin to blindside you, to keep you blind from the real world utility tokens that will actually replace SWIFT, like Ripple and XRP. It is so obvious because SWIFT-based transactions, though faster than before, often, often leave users uncertain about the status or whereabouts of their money, not to mention the increasing challenges that occur when making transactions on holidays or even weekends outside of traditional banking hours, they are effectively useless. And it is this lack of transparency and occasional delays that continue to pose challenges in an increasingly globalized economy. And this is the mountainous task that Ripple has set out to solve and they have solved. As you can hear in this interview of Marjane de Latine, she used to work for Swift and was a key member responsible for large scale projects in both securities and payments. And she joined Ripple to disrupt the old financial system. Take a listen. My name is Marjan de Latine. I joined Ripple actually um, 10 months ago and I used to work for Swift for more than a decade. And my last assignment was, uh, I was responsible for GPI, that I'm sure you have heard about it, uh, changing the cross-border or transaction banking systems. Now coming back to Ripple, because I joined Ripple to disrupt. And I think that's, that's the main uh, objective of the Ripple. Uh, Ripple is a blockchain company. Um, uh, the vision of the Ripple is to create um, an ecosystem uh, with a, a mission that we have, which is creating an internet of value. So when we look at the current landscape of uh, exchanging data, which is happening over internet in a matter of seconds, payment still is going through a long term cycle, uh, three to five days for a simple uh, cross border transaction. So our vision, or the Ripple vision, is really uh, making the payment, the transfer of the cross-border, as smooth as possible than the exchange of the data today uh, over internet. That's in a nutshell what we are doing. Now, truth be told, Marjan de Latine no longer works for Ripple, She's leaving back in 2021 now, but she is now the managing director at SETL, a company that counts Citibank as a major investor with high profile clients. And Ripple has been working alongside Citibank to develop solutions for central bank transactions for a very long time now. Ripple has the technology, the protocol to replace the old Swift system and the BRICS nations know this. Their new system will utilize XRP. XRP is destined to soar in value in the years to come, but that is not the only reason why the BRICS are not the only reason why this will happen because 
Ripple are releasing their own stablecoin within the next one to two months, the RLUSD, which will be one to one backed by the US dollar. And this bombshell announcement about the RLUSD only gets better as we can hear in this interview with Marcus Infanga, the RLUSD will be listed on several exchanges. Minting directly with Ripple will be available for institutional grade enterprise customers. This is massive news. Take a very close listen. It will be, the idea is it's going to be uh, launched later this year. It's going to be available on several exchanges. <clears throat> we hold several, several licenses that sort of like back, you know, this institutional grade, really trusted compliance first aspects to it. Recently acquired standard custody and with that, uh, a New York trust license. We have like 40 um, you know, uh, money transmitter license in the US, we have an M MAS payment license, etc. And then so this Ripple stablecoin can be expected to be listed on several exchanges. <clears throat> Minting directly with Ripple will be available for like institutional grade enterprise customers. Um, yeah, in, in, uh, in, in the early stages as well. Uh the more the RLUSD is utilized as a medium of exchange for high liquidity corridors, dollar to euro for example, the more liquidity will flow into the XRP ledger, increasing the use case therefore and then price of XRP. The RLUSD has a stupid amount of potential upside in price and use case as again Marcus Infranga confirmed in this interview in a similar interview the stablecoin market is 21 to 22 trillion dollars in the United States alone imagine what it's like in the whole world massive potential take a listen how are you planning to gain market share against established players like Circle and Tether and the PayPal's that just launched last yeah. year I, I love that question I'll, I'll start by saying the global stablecoin market cap is what around like 150 billion. The total amount of US dollar right now, just US dollar alone in the world, if you look at M0, M1, M2 money supply, that's like 21 to 22 trillion dollars. <clears throat> so why am I saying this? I, I'm saying this because like we're not so much thinking about uh, oh my God, how is this going to compete with, you know, USDC and USDT, but more about like, hey, this pie is going to grow so much better, bigger, right, than it is right now. Mm -hmm. And so we look at, uh, you know, we, we think USDC is going to continue to be here, and that's great. Uh, we look at these dynamics more as like co-opetition than, uh, you know, competition. Uh, and, you know, we're, we feel very confident in terms of like, the pedigree we have as a company, the track record we've built, the use cases we have already built up over, you know, um, a decade now, um, that this uh, Ripple stablecoin will play an important role in terms of like transforming financial markets. The RLUSD will become one of, if not the most desired stablecoin used by institutional grade clients. Circle is currently leading this charge of course because our USD is not out yet and then Tether is quickly becoming obsolete we can see here from Cyprus the blue chip stablecoin readings USDC circle is sitting at a B plus rating which isn't too bad and USDT Tether is now at a D overall rating Tether is done for and in my opinion when the RL USD is released I wouldn't be surprised to see it surpass that of circle as well maybe reaching A tier or even higher A plus S tier and the bottom line as well is that you are so lucky. You are so early. Institutional investors are confirming here that we are early, that we are about to witness and be a part of the great wealth transfer. I'll ask you to, come up, to give your, your, your thoughts for the years ahead. Yeah, um, as Joanna said, adoption is for sure going to go up. We will see more liquidity coming into digital assets, which uh, leads to more professionalization. Um, as already mentioned also before by Joanna, demand is currently or will be much greater than supply, which also have, will have its, uh, effect, its effect. And uh, not to be underestimated also the, the great wealth transfer, which we are in the middle of now, which will have a crucial importance for digital assets. And yeah, it's an in, it's interesting times to be alive, I would say.
and to prove to you how early we are, this AAA report here from Cyprus found by Cyprus showcases 562 million people across the world now own crypto, making up 6.8% of the global population. 6.8% that's barely anything. Just imagine what will happen to this asset class when 15% of the population owns crypto or even 25 or even higher. The value of this asset class will soar in value and you will ride this wave up alongside every other early investor. XRP will be a leader in this market. Do your own research and don't look short term, think long term and I'll see you in the next one.